Can you say hard hats, folks? Hard hats, lunch pail, steel to a boot? Anything short of a championship this year is a failure. Look really at this boomer right here. You've just got so much talent here. Somebody said we need to apologize for Jalen. Hey, can I call the John? What are we apologizing for? What would we say? What would we do? <laughs> Still rolling. What's, what's going on, guy. guys? Look who jumped on, everybody. I couldn't not jump on. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Look who made an appearance. I had to get a bite of the exciting. apple. He can, he can miss one loss, but he'll be dandy he misses two in a row. <laughs> oh, goodness, no. It wasn't this even was that. Dramatic. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, there's, yeah, so, there's, there's so much to unpack there at the very end, which is a ton of fun. Um, yeah. But... I'll let you guys carry this. I'm here as a tourist. I'm no, I'm no, in- no, don't give us is that. This the, is this don't the Al Horford load management game where he's like, I'm in the host square, square, my friend. friend. Not playing. I'm in a no, hotel. He's hitting, though. Whoa. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm actually staying at the um at the uh, Holiday Inn. Speaking of losers, <laughs> you know, we're at the hotel where the Arizona Wildcats are. Um, oh. on their way back here. I oh, saw wow. at their sad boosters filing, and we're right here. We're right here at Staples Center, so we got all the action right around us. A uh, ton go. of stuff going on. Game right, right behind me. Another game going on. Um, but I watched the end of this, and I wanted to jump on. <laughs> Is there anything worth talking about other than the end, guys? No. Well, there was. I mean, I mean, it was. It was a great game. I mean, there were some things that you liked out of it. Okay. I mean, there were some things you didn't like. It was a great game, sure. I'd back well, the Hawks. Them. I guess it was a back and forth game. You know, it was a lot of lead changes. It was entertaining. No, we're, we're, Celtics would miss. Hawks would grab the rebound. Hawks the would offensive miss. rebound. Hawks would yeah, grab the it rebound. Was, it, it was, I mean, it was. It was frustrating. Second chance, was, third chances. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Let's it, just talk about the end. Let's talk about the last two minutes of regulation. And well, let minutes. me ask you guys first. You How did they yeah, even get up. to that point? This sounded not to me like, look. I, I think there's actually probably more to be concerned with in a game where you went punch for punch with a team and you 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 had something to play for. You got embarrassed after having lost a 30-point lead last game. Last game didn't bother me as much outside of the late-game execution. This game, you just got beaten and outplayed by a play-in team. Um, and you got to reconcile that. Uh, what happened mm-hmm. to even get, you know, what, what happened to even get to this point where it was close and late? Watching this game felt like you were watching the Celtics die a death of a thousand cuts. Miss <laughs> offensive rebound here. Miss loose ball there. Second chance Throw points. Layup. Yeah. Second chance points here. Giving it to the guy who hasn't really been the, the guy that scores when you need a bucket in the last minute. How about Derek White, the guy who gave you who knocked down a shot that put you up? How about Jalen Brown, the guy that made, again knocked down a shot that put you up? They actually right, right. use we, – we'll talk a bit more about it later, but the idea of using Tatum as a decoy down a stretch in close games, love it. The idea of using him as my number one, two, three, and four option to score, don't love it. Why? Because it doesn't work. So Yeah, teams figure it out, man. It's redundant for sure. I saw a lot of I, that as well, especially in that fourth quarter. Can we – I want to flip this conversation a tad. I, I think we spend a lot of time saying, well, it's predictable. When Tatum has the ball, defenses load up. Murray had the ball and the defense was prepared for him to take that shot and he hit it. So maybe we need to stop. We need to reframe the conversation a little bit. It isn't necessarily that giving the ball to your best player late in the game to try to get off a shot, you know, under difficult circumstances where you need somebody that can create their own offense is a bad thing to do. Many teams do it. It's just Jason Tatum is really bad at it. Okay, and it's that simple. He's bad at it. There's a three year track record. He's bad at this. It's not Mm. he doesn't do this well. So at some point you have to stop saying, oh, geez, it's the ISO and it's so predictable. No, Tatum sucks at it. Like he just he's just bad at it. He's just not. It, it, the numbers bear out in this situation. It's always something that's falling away, off balance. He's he, he can't get anything going to the basket. It's the same shot every single time. He's bad at it. And, and conversely, Derek White and, is not bad Mike at it. it. Mike drop. <laughs> Derek Go White ahead. and and I gotta say, Jalen Brown actually yeah. In, in, yeah. in the overtime yeah. period tonight, he got the shot and he you know Porzing the ball went into Porzingis. Porzingis found Brown and Brown hit that shot. So they they actually had. Um, Tatum out at 
you know, well, half court. Him as a decoy. Yeah, exactly. Taylor, at one point, he dove to the basket, and the defense kind of froze for a second, and that and they swung at the Jalen, and Jalen had the defender slightly off balance because they were worried about Tatum, who was diving to the basket. That was a great, great play. Even if the, even if Jalen didn't make the shot, the fact that they were utilizing Tatum in a way that actually benefited the offense as opposed to benefiting Tatum's ego to be the guy to take the last shot was great to see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's so, the thing, Sean. Like, the last game, I had no problem with Jalen Brown having the ball in his hand. I just had an issue with how he handled the time, you know, in those last, you know, six, five, four seconds. It took him a long time, and he just got off a really, really bad shot. But how many times have you seen that with Jason Tatum? And I'm not saying that he doesn't, he hasn't earned the opportunity to take the last shot in that moment, but it doesn't always have to be him. This thing is predictable, including teams like the Atlanta Hawks. It's, earning it. he, it's not about this earning that moment. A bunch of- Everybody knew. Yeah, no, you're right. It's not about earning it, but the thing is that like that's just like the norm with Joe Serve's got nothing to do with it, Joe Sway. This isn't right. college. You get a bunch of stickers on your helmet, and that means something. Like you're trying to win a game here. Like there's no. Like gold, right. you get a but bunch you know of gold stars, no. you know, like, oh, well, you I deserve like the ball. Guys. The guy who takes the most shots typically has that opportunity, or most of the time, right? And, and that's okay, but like you said, John, when it's not – when there isn't a consistent track record, it's it's okay to switch things up, especially when it's a tie game. If you miss, you go into overtime. You know, why don't we try to do something different, you know, especially at this time of the season with Joe Mazzula, who's been spicing things up every once in a while, including the last time these two teams met when he put Springer in to start the fourth quarter. Now you got your guards in. You still didn't have a great just overall performance. Let's face it here. Like, this team just didn't look like one that should have had a, a sense of urgency. Someone that just – a team that should have came in and said, look, we, we, we remember what you did the early week, and we're going to punch you guys right in the mouth. They never came out with that demonstrative approach. They never came out with that sense of urgency or, 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 or ever got on pace to get there. Atlanta was with them the entire game, and when it came down to it, they 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 fought for it. They fought harder, and the Dewan, Dewan, Murray played the, the the game of his of his career, but it shouldn't have happened like that. If you're the Boston Celtics, you had plenty of opportunities to make sure that didn't happen, that they didn't end up winning this game. Such a hilarious Murray line: forty four points on forty four shots. Like that's insane. Is, <laughs> you're not playing it. You're, that's you're badass. You're a sky chucker. Yeah, I mean, nineteen three pointers. He That's hit the crazy. he hit the one Tatum couldn't hit at right. the end, the ISO at the top of the key. And you guys are right; it's it's a shot that you see often from the stars that can hit the shot. The Celtics are trying to fit a square peg into a round hole with that, and it's just not working. And they had two chances in regulation. They got bail, not bailed out. They got fouled with seven six point seven seconds left. I think it was. And Missoula could have drawn up anything else. And he just gave it right back to Tatum again and for the forced three-pointer. So that was I so damn frustrating. Have it, else, it was Jimmy. so problem, it, it was it was so predictable. It was so unbelievable and yet believable at <laughs> right. the same time. They're like, there's no way he's gonna do it. And what happens? Right, right. He throws it to Tatum in the backcourt. I'm like, oh, I thought he was gonna get an eight seconds just from 10 feet <laughs> behind the line. Yeah, the, the, yeah. How deliberate he was starting up there, and and here we go. And, and been then the first this even week. on the play on the on the on the game <laughs> broadcast, are like, well, hopefully, all right. Well, hopefully, they'll at least get some movement. And then ten seconds later, right. they're like, nobody's moving, guys. Nope, guys, that's it. Nope, guys, no one's moving. We and talked here about we go. this. And as soon as Tatum starts going, they force him left. And what happens? Oh, in comes the double team, and he's got to circle back right. No, oh, here mm-hmm. we go. We're running out of time. Say, and then you get the foul with you know. Same exact shit. All the it's un freaking believable. It's unbelievable. It, it's unbelievable. It, it's so, but it isn't. But it's not. It's, not. it's yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. There was it's no. Ma- I think the word is maddening, John. I think the word is maddening. I I just don't get it. I I don't get. It. I mean, how many times do we have to see Tatum dribble, 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 three, two, one, barely get a shot off? I mean, one, it, it's, it really is like watching, it's like being part of Groundhog's Day and you know how this is going to end and everyone knows how this is going to play out and yet we still do it over again. It's insanity. Doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. Why? Why, Joe? Why? And the, and the one time that he tries something different where you have Tatum as a decoy, 
You get a great shot for Jalen Brown, or you get a great shot for Derek White. And wasn't it wasn't it uh, pretty predictable that Derek White on the inbounds with 0.1 seconds left throws it inbounds and it goes through the net? Yeah, right. <laughs> that, that, that was that was like the that was the basketball saying. See what happens when the guy who should be on the floor is the guy inbounding the ball. All right, here's a Joe clip. What, what is this? Is this uh this is well? What do you know? It's Gary and Joe. Um, going back hey, at it about that's, whether that's the game. loss was uh demoralizing. Here's, Here's Joe. Let's go, Gary. Let's go. You better not say we couldn't guard Murray. Team up. I'm not oh, 44 boy. points on 44 oh, shots, and you already crushed JT, so you better no, not do it. Not All right, I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. Whoa, whoa. We played great nice. defense on him. Yeah. Yeah. In overtime, yeah. Three ISOs against Porzingis. Yeah. Any other way to defend that? Because obviously he's comfortable shooting over bigger players. No, those are good reps for us. We went to that on purpose. We have an opportunity to practice stuff that we're going to need to get to. And uh, we haven't done a lot of 15, uh, one through five switching with KP on the floor. So I thought that was a good opportunity for us to just work on that and get reps in that and, uh, you know, see, get it on film. How demoralizing is <laughs> Come on, man. I'm really trying hard here to, like, you know, it's not demoralizing. Demoralizing? No, I'm talking about not the loss. I'm talking about a play like. Murray gets a corner three, contests yeah. and misses, and then uh, Hunter just simply puts it up for a second chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's hard to – is that an air ball? That was the air ball? Yeah, I think it was an yeah, air ball. Yeah, you can't rebound an air ball. I mean, it's, you know, I'm sure there's ten other ones that, like, we can talk about, but you can't. You no one's going to be an air ball. It's an air ball. Yeah, but they're hitting the boards. I mean, they're getting the loose balls. I mean, no. listen, if you're looking for me to tell you that they out-efforted us for, like, six to eight rebounds, they out-efforted us for six to eight rebounds. But I'm not going to show the one on film of the air ball. <laughs> okay. First off, I want to say yeah. one thing. A lot of laughter. I want to say one thing. Uncomfortable in the chat. laughter. Jimmy. Gary, you know the real Gary, uncomfortable Gary laughter. is not negative. Gary doesn't hate the Celtics. Gary is not the enemy. Gary's just a reporter trying to ask questions that probably a lot of fans want to know about. And he's doing his best to try to get Joe to answer some of the things that we talk about here on the show mm -hmm. and at the water cooler. And then the next day, that's the job. Oh, it's not, it's not his job to go there and say, wasn't that great? Did you see Jason Tatum? Is yeah, the, is, he's only 26 <laughs> and he scored 35 and five for 48 times or blah, blah, blah. That's the game broadcast. Okay. That's not what reporters do. He's not negative. I just, I don't understand that. And he's not going at Joe. He's just trying to get some answers to the questions that everybody asks. That's it. He That's can't even get the question say. though. He, yeah, because I know. Joe gets his question with the question is before the question is asked. Right. And why he is was he asking so about on language. He hates the word and so that's all. Now he hates the word demoralizing. Like he hangs. He he, he pinpoints the the one word that he doesn't like in the question, and then all so of a sudden, it's fine. It takes but away I, from from what the yeah. question is. It's it. At the bottom does. line is this: Joe's team underperforms and he needs to be accountable for why they underperform. That's what's happening here. We're trying yes. to find out why, how the and, hell can you go to Atlanta and catch not one, but two L's two completely different ways T to John's point. I really didn't think a whole lot about the, the first game because I just figured, you know what? They showed up in town, they got up big and they just, you know, they, they let the foot off the gas. It happens. It happens all the time, but this one was, this was worse. This loss was worse because you had every reason to want to throttle this team and not only did you not put them six deep you got your ass kicked down a the stretch they out executed you when the game mattered most tatum is going to take the last shot what happens he's going to miss you knew Jajante was going to take the last shot and what does he do he splashes the ball over over, over drew mm -hmm. it shouldn't have came to that though that's what I'm yeah. saying. That this game felt like this was the death of a thousand cuts. There were so many little things that the Celtics screwed up in this game that we're supposed to pretend as if that didn't happen. We're supposed to pretend as if, you know, Tatum, when they were being physical with Tatum, that it didn't bother him and force him to take some shots when he probably should have swung the ball to get a, a great shot as opposed to a tightly contested shot. Come on, Joe. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, another thing I want to address in the chat here, everyone's saying like, Oh, it was a lot of offensive rebounds. Like, like that's like some like freak accident, like a landslide or like an earthquake. Like you allowed this to happen. It's not some freak right. occurrence. Like 
it, when you let teams beat you up on the boards, that is bad. I mean, I, I don't understand why people are saying it like it just right. happened. And Atlanta's yeah, right. Atlanta's one of the best, if not the best, at offensive rebounds. But here's the thing: Second best, you know yeah. that going in. You know that going into the game. They just so showed why, you three days ago, Sherrod. Yeah, it's crazy. So why is your why why is your strategy seemingly one that doesn't address what their greatest strength is? Right, and it's not even about the bigs too. That's another thing too, man. Like you had wow. Krejci, you had uh, Bogdanovich. Like these guys are just getting second chance, sometimes third chance opportunities, and the Celtics never stopped that. It, it went one through four all the way until overtime as well, when Murray went off too, and. It's just – it's stuff like that that you're going to get questioned about. You're going to get a question that, that uses the word demoralizing because, I mean, it's the Atlanta Hawks we're talking about. Yeah, they're not at the bottom of the standings, but for a team like the Boston Celtics that just came off a game where they blew a 30-point lead, you would expect a completely different approach. There was nothing different about this game. Outside yeah. of, of of seeing Holiday in the mix and White in the mix as well, you know, but you never, it didn't really affect – in terms of what they were doing, in terms of executing, the Celtics never cleaned up the issues that they had all game long. The same ones that we saw Tuesday night, and it's the same. It's the reason why or Monday night. It's the reason why you're gonna you're gonna get asked about this, Joe. Like, come on, man. Like, 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 like what do you expect them? They're just gonna just gonna say, "Hey, too bad Tatum didn't make that shot, huh?" Then you guys would have never gone to overtime. Like, what kind of question is that? Gary wouldn't be doing his job if he asked questions like that. Yeah, um, crazy. Big upset tonight. I'm out here. There's March Madness going on in Boston. There's March Madness mm-hmm. going on in L.A., mm-hmm. where I am. And there's March Madness going on here in this chat right now. And wow. what we've got is an upset in the making in the Herman Gomez region, the Elite Eight, the <laughs> Nasus Manning, which I thought was a heavy, heavy, was heavy like favorite. Going. It's it, it's it's not over yet, John. There's still plenty. I, it's not over. Yet. Thanasis Manning, in my mind, was a heavy favorite in this yeah. one. Okay, a lot of juice behind it. You get video attached to Thanasis Manning, so you have a visceral reaction every time you hear it too, because you know what it looks like. But the try that he's your third center. That's a hot. Late, late, late edition. <laughs> it's even hot though into it's the been, it's he's been saying it for two years. But, but Jimmy really, really finally brought it night. to life. Yeah. <laughs> he's your third center. What do you? He's your third center. <laughs> it won the Missouri what Valley. What do you want Conference. from him? <laughs> it won the Missouri Valley Conference to get that at large bid. They're in. Had to win their third center. <laughs> he's your third center. I love it. I, it's hard not to pass up on that. I think it, I think it's gonna go to final four, man. So it's, it's a Bobby huge. versus Bobby matchup here, yeah. even though it's <laughs> yeah. this one is tight. Get your votes in. We're gonna switch it up at about the 30 minute mark of this show. The poor are gonna this run through the, the weekend. Bracket, guys. You never know. This right. one is tough. And then mm. uh we we are hopping over to what's the next one, Amit? We're gonna we're also are we doing you know, a Kevin oh, Jelly one today? It. No, I, we might be. Last time think, we I, went up and down. I don't know if we're going to keep doing it that way. No, we were sw- we were switching around. We we're going to vote on something else. Uh, Ahmed right. is uh, we'll, we'll what's find next? Out. Ahmed's an ATL, so we, he already might be at the clubs for all we know. Ahmed <laughs> <laughs> didn't even. Ahmed didn't did even get a hotel her. room. He just he just stayed <laughs> up at yeah. the clubs. He know yeah. he knows the moment this show's over. He Company can, man, he's free. He's, you guys he's off the hook, up. so he's he's focused right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he focused. Not happy about OT, I'm sure. Changed the yeah, we've got <laughs> CLNS is on the road this week. We've got <laughs> whatever. We've got these guys in ATL. Bobby's going to join us in a little bit. Nick and I are in Los Angeles right now wow. at a conference, and we are going to. We're staying in the Herman Gomez region. Farts, my dog versus Blame Pie, a no two-six matchup, just like just yeah. like the one that just happened here, Arizona versus Clemson, and you had an upset, the six-one in that one. Farts, <laughs> my dog, also a you know a late one this year, but the Herman Gomez in general has been a wild region this yeah. whole yep. time through. Kevin Jelly stayed stayed true to form. The, the, the favorites took care of business, but Kevin jo- yeah. uh, Herman Gomez, look out. Look, look out. out. So we will uh, prompt you once again when this one jumps in, but we do have, uh, you know, uh, we've got a little bit of fun here. Um, we're told Jalen Brown's going to talk, uh, Holiday and Tatum, so we'll hear from those guys as well. Um, guys, bringing it back to you. You watched the whole game. Uh, air your grievances. Ugh. I need more Derek White. Yeah? I need more Derek White. 
on nights like this where he where he's got got at his shot game, going at a high level, he needs to have more than eleven shots. Yeah, in a game where you're just trying to find someone to just give you that separation that you need to bury this team, I need more shots from Derek White on nights like this. I would co-sign that. I mean, I, I there's no reason not to. I mean, you, you the worst part of this loss is the fact that you had the guards tonight. You can right. make the excuse on Monday that you had no holiday, you had no white. Tonight, the offense should have been clicking. The defense should have been playing a lot harder. Uh, those, There's no excuse for this, the amount of second chance, chance points that the Celtics allowed tonight, majority off those offensive rebounds. Just frustrating. I mean, I like that they got Porzingis involved early. Um, you know, obviously it's good to get him going, but he kind of fell off too towards the end of that. To yeah. the game, and they got, and they didn't get much of any any bench production tonight. Um, Hauser missed his first couple, and he ended up with eight points. Uh, but you know, Pritchard four, Cornette four, Tillman two. So again, you know, with Horford on the with Horford missing this one, you were kind of pretty thin on that bench tonight, and it showed. And and you know that plays a part in uh, that plays a part in the and and when you know some of your guys like if if a guy like you know Holiday's still coming back from something. Um, you can't expect him to be go 100 percent out there, and and you know it would have been a probably a, a, a situation if Pritchard could have had a better game that might have helped. But overall, I think I'm kind of with Sherrod. You know, get White more involved. He played 41 minutes. Um, you know, he even hit a shot from out of bounds tonight, but that, unfortunately that yeah. one didn't count. But um, you got to get. Him I want to address this. This is the second time someone said this in the comments. This is actually incorrect. The correct thing you do when you're down in a game is you take that last shot with seven, eight seconds left so you have a chance at two things, both an offensive rebound or a foul with enough time to be able to get the ball back after the free throw. So a couple people have said this. This is incorrect. A tie game, you you leave nothing on the clock. Mark and Melanie. We when love you're you. Losing, we appreciate We love the money. you and we appreciate the contribution. I bring this up because three or four people said it in the chat. The yeah. correct thing to do is what Jalen did. That play was a hot dumpster fire. Uh, and thank goodness Jalen bailed out because that's what he does. He hits difficult contested shots and that's what he did. Probably should have been an and one, but absolutely, absolutely has to leave time on the yeah. clock when you're trailing on that last possession. Uh, there, but uh, but again, thank you for the contribution. I don't mean for the call out here, but it's the uh, third or fourth uh, time someone has said that. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing wrong with what Jalen did there. Um, Just the first time you, somebody's ever paid to get bashed, I think. I didn't. I'm tough. so. I feel bad about it's it. I, I wanted to you know, acknowledge it, but also, as we you said, did it, it gently. You did it gently. Some people, was, you know, they they like that though. They like they, they like that. They, they like to get. Yeah. You know what else people bucks. like? It smacked around. They like, they like winning some dough, right? Exactly. Prize picks. <laughs> Largest daily pivot, fantasy John, sports pivot, platform in North America. Easiest, most exciting way to play DF, uh, DFS. It's you and the numbers. You don't battle a million other players or pros and sharks out there. It's just you and the numbers. Pick more or less on a two to six player stat projection. Watch the winnings roll in. Uh, you know, deep, like we said, into basketball yeah. season here. There's no football, but there's a ton of stuff. You can get in on the action, NBA, NHL, on prize picks right now. So go ahead and check it out. Uh, prize picks. Hope you pick more on Murray. Hope you pick more on Murray. Um, it's super easy to download. It's a very intuitive app. It's it's extremely easy to do. And if you download it today and use the code CLNS, that's very important. And it's as easy as it gets. You download it and it says, do you have a code? And the box is right there. You type CLNS and bing. You deposit 100, they match it up to 100, and there you go. Once again, download the app. Use that code CLNS for mm-hmm. your first deposit match up to 100. Once again, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. That, of course, is Prize Picks and the exclusive fantasy sports, daily fantasy sports partner of the CLNS Media Network. Uh, guys, jumping back in here, uh, I'll ask this question. Uh, why not have Tatum on Murray a little bit? Uh, that's worked before and he's a great on ball defender and we saw him switch the switch the momentum against um you know players in the past when he's decided to man up obviously the sga one against oklahoma city even though that game was a loss was a great example but we've seen him do it a few times uh is that something you might have tried and again i i don't disagree with joe like they didn't play bad defense 19 of 44 
I mean, whatever. Yeah. I mean, he scored. He just took forty-four freaking shots. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I can't really jump on them about the defense because I mean, if you hold a guy to shooting like that from the field, eighteen for forty-four, whatever it was, it let's that's about forty percent, uh, and that's pretty good defense uh, against a guy, particularly a guy that's taking that many shots. Uh, their problem, I, I thought, in, in this game was again just little things, just n- not tightening up the kind of things that you you need to be functional at in order to just handle your business and be the team that has no business playing with you. Uh, that, to me, was the issue. Uh, their defense on on uh, Dejounte, I, I didn't have a problem with that because again, it, for him, to, I, I think most players, really top tier players, if they take forty four shots in a the game, they're going to hit you with a fifty burger at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, I was I was perfectly cool with what they were able to do defensively for the most part. Obviously, Drew at the end there, you don't want to see that. But overall, though, I thought they did a, they did a pretty good job defensively. I, I agree with this comment. I think Murray 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 was taking that shot regardless of how Sorry, many. I, did, I took that off by accident, Jimmy. Okay, I'll put it back. Murray was yeah. taking that shot no matter how many guys were standing in front of him. To, you know, it, type of player he is, type of you know attitude he had tonight. He was, you know dancing and prancing all around there on the court, pointing at the Celtics bench. Everybody knew that he was going to take the shot. So you could have probably had somebody, uh, sw- you know, double up onto him at some point there because, uh, you know, maybe that leaves Bogdan open, which is going to kill you too. But I still would have maybe taken that that little risk there because it felt <laughs> yeah, like that's that the ball thing, wasn't though. leaving his hands. Because that Joe Mazzullo is always going to think about that that guy who's going to be open in the corner. I feel like he hates to, to lose that way than a, a contested shot but at the same time though I, I just wonder if I mean the thing about the thing about this Hawks team is or Murray in particular is that he likes that moment he wants to be in that moment now this whole time since Trey's been out like the Hawks have been 500 or somewhere around there or you know they've been hot they've been cold but he's he's enjoying every moment because he's he's the guy he's able to do this right put up 44 you know I mean or put up 44 attempts you know, be the focal point of the offense. So I, I feel like in, in, in this instant, probably should have doubled in that in that spot, you know, if, if Bogdanovich isn't wide open. But I just think Joe Mazzilla just didn't – he wasn't he wasn't going to do that. He, he wants to match up straight up. He wants Drew to be in that situation, even though Drew's been out, you know, because that's his role, to, to, to latch on to guys like that. But Murray got the better end of this uh, of that one, you know. And then going into overtime, I just felt like – so they never found that offensive rhythm that they needed, you know, and a lot of it is because you get you give these guys more confidence every time. And, well, first of all, they didn't they didn't take them seriously. Like, let's just be honest here. I mean, you, there's no way they did or at least took them as a as a, the way they would take on a, a, a Denver Nuggets or one of the top tier teams. It's just sort of that mindset that they have at times where it's like, oh, we're going to close this out. We'll just figure it out. But they're not they never plugged those holes that, that got the Atlanta Hawks or kept them in it the whole time. And. Eventually, they grabbed that lead, whether it was the second chance opportunities, rebounding, boxing out, you know, slipping up coverages. Uh, I, I just thought the way the Celtics executed down the stretch as, as well. I mean, Jalen makes that big shot, but you you have to keep it going. You know, you have to you have to finish. You have to defend. And I feel like that was just it was just a bad possession for the Celtics on, on the defensive end of the floor, whether you double him or not. It's just he had he had a great shot. He had a good chance to make it. And he did. So can I ask you guys this question? Um Coming off the game last time where they, you know, they blew the lead and you have the late game execution issues and you lose uh, to a shorthanded Hawks team. Didn't this feel coming in like this would be like a 70 point game, you know, and, and, and a get right and flex your muscles. And did it feel like they played with that level of urgency throughout? No, never. Not once did I get that feeling. No. No, I agree. I mean, as they chuck in the first quarter, I mean, you kind of got that was like an indication in itself. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's gonna be one of those games. Not that oh, Southern's gonna be in trouble, but it's like, oh, they're gonna have to, like, the Hawks are gonna, they're not gonna go anywhere, and the Southern's gonna have to really work hard from, on this one. Let's see if they do it. You know, like that's that was my mindset. And, and it, if Porzingis didn't have such a great first half, they would have been losing at halftime. So yeah, but they figured something out. And I was the, the one I thought Jalen Brown did a lot of really good things, but the one thing that he didn't do as good a job as I thought he could have was staying with DeJounte Murray when they were trying to switch and get Porzingis on him. I mean, he DeJounte just absolutely murdered the Celtics uh, when he got that switch on Porzingis, who could not guard him, and understandably so. But when Drew Holiday switched out on DeJounte, he had a much harder time getting that switch. Uh, you you look at the, like, the last three or four minutes, and other than that, the game winner, I thought Drew did a much better job of not allowing DeJounte to get the shots that he had – 
frankly been feasting off of all game. Uh, there's a lot of lessons that I hope the Celtics take away from this game. Um, being better at defending the pick and roll, not just switching everything. Sometimes as a guard, you got to fight through that, that and stay attached to a guy, particularly when he's scoring pretty much every damn bucket that the opponent is getting. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that they learn from him. I'm hoping that they use Jason Tatum and more as a decoy down the stretch uh, so that other guys will have opportunities to make plays. Does, and guys who've shown they can do that. Does Joe, Jimmy, does Joe have the balls to do that? No. Take the ball out of Tatum's hands. No, I mean not not regularly. Thank you, thank you for the no. thank you for the chat. I want to. Yeah. We're going to talk about Joe a little bit here. Thanks. Thank you, Jamaican boy. Jamaican um, boy. <laughs> Appreciate. No, you. I mean I, I was finally glad to see him do it in the overtime there because it, I mean three straight possessions of Tatum just hoisting up or attempting to hoist up. My, that might have been Joe's head on a stake after. I think he must have understood that situation. So. I think it's going to come down to Tatum's going to be the guy to get the first crack at it. I really do. I don't know what it's going to take for that to not be the case. I think Missoula still has all the confidence in the world in him. And maybe it's stubbornness. Maybe Missoula knows better than everybody else does. And based on the numbers and some other stat that we're not privy to, uh, it makes the most sense. But I don't see it changing. I really don't. I mean, I think it should. I love the other options on this Great team. Great comment. Great comment here. This, I mean, again, he's got a year under his belt, but we saw it last year, right? We were saying all year long, like, yeah, Marcus Smart's the third best guard on this team, and he's never going to do it. And he wouldn't play White. He'd forget about White and be like, I should have played him more. We're like, it's the playoffs, dude. You can't right. forget yeah. about this guy. Like, is you know, is he going to be able to do that? You know, I don't know. I'm not convinced. No, I mean, I've no, put it this way. I have no reason to believe the answer is yes. Prove me wrong. At this point, I have no reason to believe the answer is yes. Yeah, especially in the playoffs, man. I don't see that happening at all. I, I, if anything, tonight was the night to do something like that, you know, or at some point between now and the end of the regular season. But also kind of throw teams off and, and get the other guy, you know, reps at, to, to be in that spot, whether it's White or whether it's Jalen Brown. Um, Jalen's getting those those big spots, though. It may not be the very last shot of the game type of situation like we saw tonight with Tatum, but. Um, I like him in those spots, though. I like that you're seeing the ball in his hands more often, where that was one of our big complaints. It seemed like, you know, under the two-minute mark in, in some of these close games throughout the course of the regular season, Jalen wouldn't really take those shots, you know, or he would uh, put it off, you know. So I, I like that because it gives him, um, obviously, the team another option, but it also gets Jalen his reps in those, in, those, uh, in those moments. The other thing I was going to just add is there, there are a lot of situations where Missoula is not making the call and it's really on the players to I think understand the situation, mm -hmm. get it to the guy with the hot hand or get it to the guy that they think is in the best uh, situation and give him the best chance to score. I mean, there's how many times did we tell Missoula call a timeout here and he doesn't. So I guess damned if you do damned, if you don't, because if he does call a timeout, you might not be so confident, even though he's been good. I think the statistics would show Sherrod that they've been effective out of timeouts scoring wise. Um, a ATO plays, but you know, in those crunch time situations, uh, things just seem to, it seems to things go a little bit haywire. It feels like if we lost John, I'm not sure, but um, anyways, yeah, that's yeah, kind of where I'm at with it. They, they do. I mean, the, the, you're, you're looking for this time of year, a certain level of consistency and cohesiveness from your group, because that's what it's going to take to be the last team standing. And this game felt as though this was a step backwards from that. Uh, where they just didn't seem as attached as they needed to be in order to do some of the most basic fundamental things like, you know, don't allow their scoring guard to get free and get the matchup that he wants. Be the yes. aggressor, be the dictator of, of that stuff. And they just didn't dictate the action enough uh, to win this game. And, you know, the final score, I, I think, is a little bit misleading. Uh, Atlanta played a better game than the Celtics. Uh, and the final score does not indicate the level in which they just outplayed Boston. Uh, they, their work on the boards, their timely shots, contributions from guys uh, just chipping in for the win. The uh, they were the, they, yeah, they, they played a better game than the Celtics, and the outcome is exactly what happens when you play a team that you're better than, but they're just playing better than you in that moment. Uh, you're going to lose. No. Facts you are going to lose. Them. You know who like, might lose? I'm not kidding here. It's getting close. The Manning. Manning is in deep, yeah. deep trouble. Oh if you kill him, 
if you want to rescue Thanasis Manning, you're going to have to take to Twitter and vote. Yeah, the poll safe, is man. off. It, it is off. We have switched out the Herman oh. Gomez reason. We are now on Farts by Dog and Blame Pie. That poll is live Ooh, now in, in the chat on both our YouTube channels, which you should subscribe to if you haven't already. And please give us some likes. Likes do good things for the algorithm, and it makes more people like us. I don't know if more people will like us. I don't even know if you guys like us, but it helps. So some yeah. likes are great. Subscribe if you Nicholas haven't already. All right. What? Yeah, Nick says that. I, you know, I don't even I know like if it's him. true, but he says it, so I'm going to say it, too. I believe yeah, in it. Yeah, it's got to be true. Well, no, he, he it can't it hurt. Comments. He says it in the comments a lot. Everyone I believe in like this. Yeah, yeah. Like me, please. Well, Guys. You have to sing. <laughs> yes. Steven I want you to like me. Speaking of blame pie, John. And we are going to pivot. We are going to pivot to our blame pie, and we're going to talk right. about it. If anyone wanted to know okay. what the blame pie meant, here you go. What do we have today? What is in the bottom? It's blurry. It's like a hot Blur dog. pie. Are those peanuts or something? Looks like yeah. We got ta- we got we got we got ox. Their wings. The big three. Are those oh, lemon pepper? Oh, the wings. Those are lemon pepper those wings. Those are lemon, lemon pepper, pepper wings. Pepper, lemon pepper wings. <laughs> Damn it, Amit. We should, there should be a picture of Amit, actually, on the plane pot. Amit should be the question mark. I blame no, Amit. You should post the picture, the, the wing that you posted, man. He had, yeah, the, the he should be the plane pot. That's funny. I'm going with All Joe right. in this. Who's cutting it? Are oh, these guys having too much fun in Atlanta? Is that a real I thing? am at a blame pie convention in Los Angeles. These guys are having wings in Atlanta. I know they had a team yeah. dinner. Is that is that a real thing? Who? The something. Yeah, didn't they have a, a team dinner the other night? And they but, better have. Uh, they were in they were in the same same town so, together for three days. Well, no, I mean like it was like a an event or something. Are they having so, so fun in Atlanta? Is that the problem? Who who gets it tonight? Uh, it's easy to pick on. <laughs> it's easy to pick on Tatum. Um, I'm going with Joe. Just, by the way, this is a great and straightforward comment. John, I like the garden report. Thank, thank you. you. That's all Thanks, Nick. Nick. That's not about the algorithms, but thank What's you. Up? Nick, we like you. It's not going to help, you, but you got to like it. No, yeah, don't yeah. tell me you like it. Yeah. You know, if that's like oh. the I, I, your name, your name, yeah. you know. Don't Repeat tell me you later. love me. Show me. All right, Nick, that's funny. Show right? me the love. Show me the love. <laughs> but... He said, go like it. He liked it. He told you. He liked it. So how much of this is, like, I. We played Monday. We played Monday night, and we gave it to mostly Tatum and some to Joe. I always give it to Tatum. And this is a classic Tatum game where he just was sleepy and sucky for a while. And then he kind of comes on a little bit late, and everyone's like, oh, you're playing today? And then at the end, you've got the broadcast gushing over his stats for getting a 35-5 game. It just – was that representative of, like, the type of effort that you got from your star player throughout the course of this game and the way he came out and the way he played in the early going? It doesn't feel like it, right? It's like you were looking for a little bit of a take-charge performance, and what you got was oh, shots not falling, you know, like kind of mm-hmm. passive. So I don't know. I mean, I'm always going to start with the players, and I'm always going to start with the best players. You can nitpick the other guys, but, you know, and again, this is what we're talking about. Who else dropped 30? I don't know, man. I, you know, you want to use stats sometimes and not other times to make your points. That's fine. But, like, did Tatum – do you think Tatum was great tonight? Do you think Tatum did what he had to do? No, he you was good. I mean, he's always I'm, good. I'm he's always it. good. I'm going to flip what the I did. Point is, by the way, is has the inside track on next year's uh, bracket, by the way, already. Jamaican boy as an entry with Brad. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Josue. Sorry, no, sorry. I was reading Jamaican boys' comment. Um, no, I was saying I, I'm gonna just flip what I said Monday when it was 60 40. I had a, I had a, uh, Joe and no, what was it? Tatum and Joe, right? Yeah, Tatum have 60 40 on Joe. I'm gonna go the other way this time. I'll, I'll go 60 percent, uh, Joe Missoula and 40 percent on Tatum. 60. Um, wow, yeah, mm-hmm. I just think I feel like. In those situations, whether it's drawing up a play, whether it's getting guys on the same page, whatever the case may be, and I get it. The players have to go out there and figure it out a lot of times on their own. Like that's just kind of the way it goes. You have to, you know, fill out the game, find out what what parts are, are of the team is vulnerable and, and attack. And I just think that 
a lot of times with the, with the attitude that we saw from Tatum, especially with the with the the last game, right when you got the eight seconds and walking the ball up the floor and all that. This time was a little different, you know. You you, you saw him with a little bit more urgency, you know, down the stretch or whatever in that fourth quarter. But like, I, I just don't think he it doesn't. I don't think he galvanizes the team, you know. And I think Joe Mazzula mm-hmm. as the head coach, like that's a big part of your job in a way, right? And, and especially in these moments where let, let's face it, because this team has been so successful, there haven't been a whole lot of these 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 moments these these tough okay we're going into overtime i mean what is this like the eighth or ninth overtime game in the season so like and it's been a while since they the last time they they, they had one and you look at the stats it's almost like 50 50 in terms of them winning these type of games so I, I just i just think that this this type of stuff like joe has to take something from it like something something valuable and 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 use that to finish the rest of the season you know whether it's uh, figuring out what works best at the end of the game, different combinations or whatever, putting guys in different spots. doesn't mean you have to go ahead and do it in the postseason, but I just want to see something else, you know? And I know we're not going to have a whole lot of these because maybe the schedule is not as challenging and there won't be a whole lot of teams out there. But, I mean, you look at what the Atlanta Hawks did. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are teams out there who, towards the end of the season, they don't have a playoff. They don't have a fight to, to make, the, make the playoffs. And they're going to give the Celtics, they're going to treat it like the Celtics of their playoffs. You know, that that happens when you have the best record. By a mile, like the Celtics do, and and that's something that can disrupt your your uh, your overall momentum, your flow going into the postseason. So the Celtics have to take care of business here. They have to treat these games, you know, of, of, of value. Not to say that they walked through they walked through this one, but clearly the players. What happened a few nights ago it clearly didn't affect them. It didn't seem it didn't seem like it in their body language, you know. And I think that's a that's a problem. Like whether it's playing for pride or whether it's just saying, hey. You know, let's let's get the last laugh. Let's forget what happened a few days ago and go kick their asses. And instead, we got an overtime battle game, and their team is still missing their best player. Like, let's face it, Murray's Murray's was 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 solid today. He was great. He hit some a lot of big shots, but that's a team still playing without his best player and, and missing a, a starter and and another big in Okongu. You know, coming off the bench. So, I mean, this is that's an impressive game. That's an impressive win for the Hawks, but it really makes you think about what happened with the Celtics mentally. All right, my blame pie. <clears throat> it's it's probably good. I'm gonna I'm gonna split it down the middle with Tatum and Missoula. They each could take a half of the pie. So my my reasoning is this. Plus the Tatum, Hawks played last night. I forgot about that. Sorry, Jimmy. That's crazy. <laughs> they did. That is second crazy. Night, second night of a back to back. Second night of a back to back without your best player. That and, that that is crazy, actually. I and here's why that. here's why Missoula gets just as much blame. And usually I do give it to the players. Missoula gets just as much blame. Because after the way the Celtics played on Monday, Thanks, the way Mark they Melody. I won't Thanks, criticize Mark. this one. Yeah, don't <laughs> please don't. They can't... See, I told you they liked it. They came back for more. <laughs> oh, Melanie was like, oh, yeah. Melanie was like, continue your thought, thought, Jimmy. Continue your thought. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Where was I? Now I'm, now I'm all over. Okay. I wanted to give a shout out to the Missoula got the the M- Celtics lose Monday. Missoula had whatever it was four days and two of his guards coming back. So he had all this time to draw up the plan, you know, work with the players, go over the film, different strategies, all the stuff the head coaches are supposed to do so that the Celtics did come out tonight and did what we all thought they were going to do, you know, win by, you know, double digits. They didn't do that. And then mid-game, what adjustments were made? The Hawks kept doing the same shit, crashing the boards, getting the rebounds, getting to the second chance points, hustle plays. So – if your head coach is there to make adjustments, um, get guys into the right mindset, call the right plays down the stretch, did he do any of those things tonight? If not, then how can he not take some of the blame or a good portion of the blame? It's I know the coach isn't typically going to win you the game, and it does come down on the players, but it would be nice if there was some sort of chess match here because it was a uh, you know back-to-back game between the two. Maybe it's a little playoff situation type where it's like okay you're in a seven game series you have to make adjustments this is the type of a a, a, you know series sort of uh, mentality that you want to have didn't see enough made especially with two of your guys coming back that are integral parts of this team and so that's why he gets a huge chunk of the pie and then tatum gets it because quite simply you're the superstar you're getting the ball late in the game hit the shot and you're the and you're and you're not getting uh you're not talking about the blame pie don't and now we are so that's my reasoning there it is there it is. So anything, let's put it, let's do this. All season long, it's been extremely difficult to say anything and, um, and you know, that anything matters, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah facts, my dog. <laughs> right. It, it's hard to say that anything matters or has mattered at any point in time. And hey, Jimmy, you've gotten mad at me for not being more mad over some losses, yeah. you know, throughout the year, because I just, Again, it's hard to numbers, manufacture it. I, I'll yeah. put it this way: Every, the I, I spent the whole day last game, after the game, people texting me and seeing it on Twitter and my mentions and blah blah blah. They always do this. They always blow leads. They're terrible at it, but yeah. they're not, and they haven't been, and they haven't been this year. And it's not the same thing. And I think they're thinking back a couple of years ago. I think someone posted a stat that. They've done it less in Missoula's two years than they did it in Ime's one year. So it's not. They're not horrible. They do have late game execution issues, mainly tied to their pace of play, which slows to a crawl. That, to me, is the thing that was that bugged me the most about last game, but not the whatever. So, yes, there's always an issue or two you look at and say, this could be annoying. But everyone's just saying, look at their record. This game doesn't matter. They're bored. That's fine. But the record also doesn't matter in the playoffs either. So people have to stop using that as the fallback. Yes, everything's been good, but you don't really have much margin for error in the playoffs. And these types of things, the late game issues, not showing up one night, you know, not taking an opponent seriously or coasting with a lead can mm -hmm. cost you. And, and, and you just really can't afford to have it. At what point might you get worried about anything you've seen? And again, it's two games coming off a nine game winning streak where they clinched the frigging East with 11 games to play. So yes, everything is going well. Can they do anything here, which will make you a little nervous? Down the stretch here. You mean going into yeah. the playoffs? Like, yeah. If they continue to, if, yeah. I, I've always said this, you want to go into the playoffs. It's probably more important in like the NFL. But you want to go into the playoffs playing well, feeling good, ready to go, right mindset, guys are healthy, good vibes. You don't want to just like stumble in because that sets the tone. And that gives teams a reason to think, hey, these guys are uh these guys aren't who they were in in you know November and December and January. They're a completely different team right now. Let's go in there and show them that, you know, we're better than them. And then all of a sudden you have a series after game one upset. There goes home court. There goes the momentum. There goes your confidence. And that's the how world series is falling apart. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then we and then idiots like us go on the show and say panic meter is at all time high. These guys, um, you know, something's off. This is their first um, like this is their first stretch where they've really had to overcome something or they're not prepared for it. And yada, yada, yada. So, yeah, I think there's reason to finish strong. It doesn't matter in the standings. We know that they're going to end up as the one seed. But you still want to set – this is what I said. You want to – what's the word I'm looking for? You want to make sure you, that you are, I guess, playing the right way and doing the right things. I can't think of the word, but that's my point. I'll think of it and I'll blurt it out. <laughs> yeah, we know you will. <laughs> Max, my dog. You want to do the – I and, and fuzzy, I'm home. not I, I'm not all in. My my stance has been the same. I'm 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 neither riding too high or too low on the team because I don't believe anything matters, the good and the bad. The good and what they've been able to do and the high quality of play gives Habits. you confidence that you're dealing Habits. You're, Thank you. you're dealing with a different type of team. Habits. I've thought each each version of this That's team the entering the playoffs, even that Ime year in the second half when they were killing people. I never really believed. I might have faked it a little bit because the results were certainly there that year. But I've yeah. always looked at this team and thought, like, I don't see it, man. I, I really don't. And so uh, this year you see it. You see more. But you also see little flashes of those things that gave you doubt in the past. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who shows up in the playoffs. Yes, it would be shocking if they lost in the first round or two. But it would also be not shocking if they just showed up and were in dogfights with inferior opponents and you got frustrated watching this team that's been killing people. Top five margin of, of victory all time, best mm -hmm. offensive rating all time. They've been killing people. And yes, it will be frustrating to see it, but it's not it, – there's a non-zero chance that it happens. That I'm not saying they lose in the first round, but that they're in a really annoying 
back and forth six or seven game series and you're like uh oh and then you yeah. realize First nothing about, about this about. nothing about this is going to be easy this could happen yeah. with this team so i i don't need i don't believe like they got this in the bag but i don't know what we're going to see in the playoffs i am still not convinced I, i'm i'm they got to show it like everything we've seen so far feel is good for the regular season you feel good about the team it, it kind of starts all over for me. It, so, yeah, it matters to yeah. everybody the same in the playoffs. These they're got yeah. these they're playing games right now where depending on who you're playing and where you are, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter to the Celtics in a certain way for the opposite reason why it doesn't matter to the Pistons, right? So that whole that whole mentality changes. But if you go into the playoffs thinking you're gonna just flip a switch, it doesn't happen like that all the time. First round, yeah, you can get away with it. It's talent's gonna win out. But you get to that second round, you're playing a team that just won their um, matchup too, and they're feeling good and they're riding high. So you have to earn it. You can't disrespect the game. Yep. It's never worked well, out for yeah. anyone who has. The thing, the thing that happened two years ago is that they they fooled me because of that huge run that they went on. Let's face it, historically speaking, those teams typically not only make it to the finals, they usually win it all. I mean, you could even look at the Miami Heat and – the Celtics from two years ago, that window was from January to the end of the year, which is even a longer window compared to what we saw with the Miami Heat. Now, of course, they need a little bit of luck with the playing and all that, but they got there, right? They got to the NBA Finals. I just underestimated the the the, the mindset. Well, Jim, what is Jimmy doing? Four-time champion. Well, you're so- I'm back. Well, are, are you? Are, is this what is this what they teach you at homeschool? Just do this. And then do no, that. Didn't even I didn't think you would notice. I went like this for like a you two seconds. You literally second. just, we can see you. You're Joe not Sway like a three-year-old. I was like, you're oh, not a perfect. three-year-old playing hide and seek. Like, I went like, like right it up a little bit. I usually wait for a highlight in my defense. I usually wait for, a, you know, someone talking, a oh player. Oh, my God. You, you All right, or, or do this. Jimmy, run away right now. Jalen Brown talking about late game execution. <laughs> I'm good a lot now. Of, yeah. a lot of those that's what, that, that's what you got to look for. You got to wait for those come down the shot making. You guys are four and eight in those spots this year. Is there anything else you can point to in those spots that you guys need to improve on before the playoffs, those one-point games, final minute? Uh, I think just, you know, like you said, execution, um, not settling. Sometimes I think we um, have settled um, or whatever, um, and we can get to the basket and, and things like that. But, you know, I think uh, – I think we'll be ready when it's when it's time to come. We just got to make sure that we execute. We got our spacing, and then uh, we're not settling because you know we're not leaving it to the officiator. You know, get to your spot, go up and down, and, and live with those results. Okay. 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 That's. I like that comment from Matt. Jimmy put "fax my dog" into action. <laughs> no, I know where the mute button is. <laughs> he just he just left. He just left. Uh, we've got we've got a couple things we're going to do here. We're going to do this. Oh, yeah. And we're going to do this. Uh, here is uh, – uh, we also have uh, Jason Tatum talking about things. Jason Tatum on the last shot. I like things. I feel like you fared in those spots this year, those last shots to, you know, go ahead, tie game, you know, down one, down two. Where do you feel like you're at when running those sets? Yeah, I mean, I know I – I missed a couple this year, so I was like, "Damn, I gotta be due for one." Couple. Uh, I hit a bunch of them. All of them. Part, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's part of it. Make a miss lead, but uh, I make miss really lead. Enjoy being in those situations. The one to end. Can it be another seat next year? Make miss lead. How'd that play come together? And you know, just taking a different approach there. Do you think that was beneficial? Uh, yeah. I mean, we had it's four different options. Um, D. White threw it to KP. We just know whoever got it, we wanted to go quick. As soon as KP caught it, I just ran down. I thought he was about to shoot it so I could try to get the offensive rebound. Uh, and, you know, JP made a big shot. So, you know, Drew, Drew just drew up a play. We had four or five different options, and KP just had to be the first one. All right, we're here. Bobby Manning is joining from Atlanta. John Zanis is hey. leaving. Bobby, oh, take it. Come on. Take it away. I got to go, guys. I got to go. I got to book L.A. John. Where you, where, where to tonight? No boo. Like where, where are you headed, dude? <laughs> we actually we actually we actually are going to get sushi. We're meeting with uh, eh, whatever. It sounds ridiculous. It'll sound like I'm being self important, but we have a me- <laughs> we have a, a dinner meeting tonight, so oh, we gotta wow. go. Yeah, and your best behavior. Um, Tell Nick yeah, we said hello. Yes, only six. Nick only gets six drinks tonight. Us. That's wow. Right. 
It'll be an early night then. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to wrap it up. I wanted to go to Koreatown, but uh, that's you know, a very cool bar- place. Get some barbecue, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, Bobby, I'm going to go. I'm going to configure you guys in a four box and I'm out of here. You, you, you got a golf Peace. read to do somebody. You got to sell some golf products. All right. And then there were four. They have gear now. Outfits, that's, right? The, that's what we're going to be selling, Josue. Spoiler alert. Now, Bobby, you with us? Be tuned. I'm with you. Boom. Welcome in. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so I'll just bounce off the Tatum cut the there. What the hell's going on? What's up, Bobby? What's going on? What the hell happened? I thought you were about <laughs> to Jimmy's read, but yeah, move. I'll bounce off. I bounce off the Tatum stuff there. Bounce away. Now two for eight, two for eight from the field. Then uh, one minute games under one minute uh, within one point. One for six uh, under ten seconds in one point games uh, under uh, ten seconds. So a uh, ton of misses in those spots. I think my big takeaway: uh, the last shot of regulation uh, was a disaster. I asked Joe about it, and I, I think you guys might have played it. He he answered it more from like a time and score standpoint rather than the fact that they went away from uh, the Tatum ISO in the overtime shot that they went to at the end of regulation. Uh, played through the post in Porzingis, uh, and were able to get a shot in Jalen Brown's wheelhouse. And I think there's been a lot of debate between a bunch of people, especially coming out of Monday's game, which was also a you know last minute finish. Do you go to Jalen more in those situations? Do you at least just switch it up uh, from the isolation yes. play in those spots? And they did, and it worked well. Jalen said the play got blown up. Um, Tatum said they had a bunch of options in that spot. So uh, it was just a better play. And I know jo- uh, Joe said it's because of the situation and the time, but there's no doubt in my mind that they saw how horribly that Tatum set went to end the fourth and said, we're doing something different. Uh, this time around so credit to joe for that because mm-hmm. he brutally mishandled the end of the fourth quarter there this would have been uh, a horrifying loss if they lost it a different way than just uh they couldn't go to tatum again the gutsiest of shots by murray at the end there this to me i know they say it all the time and i know they feign the confidence in these situations sometimes even after the worst of losses but this to me legitimately was a really good learning experience for this situation that might still be the biggest holdup in people who don't believe in this team winning a championship. They're now four and eight uh, in crunch time finishes under a minute, one point games. They're two and seven uh, in the final, you know, 10 second finishes of one point games. So they need to improve in these spots. I know Joe says a lot of it's shot making, but I like tonight that he actually added getting to the free throw line is important to winning those kind of games and playing through physicality is important to winning those kind of games. And along, like I said, Monday, Jimmy, he said something that I thought was a subtle uh, biting criticism of the team. He's not going to outright do it, but he said, you have to expect the teams are going to come back. He said that a couple of times over the last week, when you're up 20, when you're up 30, you have to expect the teams are going to come back tonight. He said, you have to play through physicality in those late final 10 second final minute games and I don't think the Celtics did a great job of playing through physicality tonight there was a lot of complaining over officiating I thought it took Tatum out of the game at times he only took one shot in the third I think and really struggled to begin the fourth before he got some you know shots to go uh, so Still I think start that's some, the game. something that the whole team has to do better at I know you played Jalen a lot of stuff to learn from this one that's we lose right. your dog Bobby, you there? Yeah, I, I said a lot of stuff to learn from this one. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I would, I, 100%. Um, and what about the way Tatum, I mean, I think Tatum started off slow in this one too. He wasn't the aggressive Tatum that you, I mean, it seems like they went to Porzingis early on in this game and um, maybe Tatum got going a little bit later, but uh, we were playing a blame pie earlier, Bobby, and you, you, you didn't get a chance to give us, to give us your take, but are you putting this, on Tatum tonight? Are you putting this on Missoula? Little, little of both. Where's it going? You know, I'm always going to go to Tatum. Um, I don't think Joe handled the end of the fourth great, but to learn from that in the overtime and put them in a position to win the game, uh, I thought was great on his part. 
so you know he gets points there uh for tatum it's still about being able to diversify that weight game approach there and uh, the bite we just played there jimmy it doesn't seem like there's a ton of reflection there we just missed some shots no. and it's a make miss league that to me is what one and cause, one yeah because i you know you hear jalen and it's like you can't settle we gotta be the enforcer you know stuff like that after losses like this you love to hear that joe as analytical as he can get i think has the right idea uh, coming out of games like these and oftentimes i think points in the right direction this was a game largely decided by offensive rebounding as much as the crunch time i think that's a valid point uh holiday i was a little surprised to hear the you know confidence he had coming out of this one there was just no worry whatsoever from him i think that reflects you know the situations he's been in as a champion so i think that's a little reassuring that he comes out of it that way and then you just get to tatum at the end and it's it's always the same thing, right? You know what you're going to get from him in terms of the reflection from this. Now, what is he actually looking at? How is he actually feeling coming out of this one? Maybe that's a different story. But out of losses like these, out of performances like these, it's too often just, you know, on to the next one, miss some shots, mm -hmm. be better next time. Which, you know, is good in some sense, Jimmy, because he's able to put performances like this behind him legitimately quickly. Even in the same game, he'll respond from some missed shots quickly. But when you have a little bit of a trend like this at the end of games, you want to start to look at, all right, how can we do some things differently? And Sherrod, is them going to a different player in overtime a sign that they could be, you know, soul searching a little bit uh, with those final shots? I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, Cause I, I think you've, you've got the kind of group and players well, you should you can do that and it not be anything that's awkward, or uncomfortable because the Celtics at their best, the ball is moving and it's moving in the direction of, of passing up good shots for great ones. And I thought, again, that, you know, the, the way that they utilize, I think, Jalen and Derek White specifically, I don't think they take advantage of what those guys can do in tight crunch type situations. Uh, you look at this game, the Celtics, they made a, a they, they just couldn't quite put everything together and put this team away. And yet, even at, with all the mistakes they made, big shots by Jalen Brown, big shots by Derek White. Guys were finding ways to impact the game and not necessarily be the first option. Uh, they need to just diversify it a little bit more because they've got at least two guys who've shown the ability to make big shots in crunch moments. Uh, and Tatum, that's just not who he is. That's, and we've seen him long enough to, to kind of embrace that reality that as good a player as he is and as many skills as he has, until they start calling more sets to put him in different situations to execute down the stretch, if they're just going to give him the ball and say, say go get us a bucket, he's going to struggle in that, in that scenario. And we've seen that struggle consistently. Yeah, see, that's the part that worries me, Sherrod. I feel like this might be – could be wrong, but this might be one of those stubborn, I'm going to die on this hill thing from Joe Mazzula, where it's like, look, if the game is tied and there's one possession left, it's going to Tatum. But he's not going to flat out say that, right? So I don't know if it's just a comfort thing or is he just believing in this law of averages for rising superstars where eventually, you know, the pendulum swings and he's going to start making them all of a sudden. Or he's just generally trying to build more confidence in Tatum for him to get more comfortable in that moment. I don't know which one it is, but I mean, if you ask me, it's probably the first because if you, because to me, it's like it's only a matter of time, you know. Maybe that's how that's, what, that's the way Joe's thinking about this. Like, it's only a matter of time before that shot falls. The more the more chances at it that Tatum gets, he'll just settle into that comfort level. But I don't think that's the right thing, you know. If Tatum's on, if he's having a one of those nights, then sure, of course, that then it makes the decision a no brainer. But with so many other weapons surprise us sometimes you know joe give us something that we didn't expect to see a, a, a Derek white play or shot or something you know what i mean like a backdoor cut or you know a, a high percentage shot for someone like Derek white for example right you know that would throw teams off i feel like he's open a lot of the times i mean shit he's a big reason why this there was a game seven last year right the reason why right right so i, I just think um there's other there's other things you can do there's other there's other ways to go to, to approach that that situation but part of me feels like he really wants it to be tatum again in those spots though not just oh at the end of the game get the ball to tatum everyone get out of the way but if the game's tied and the, the worst case scenario of him missing is them going into overtime i feel like it's the ball gonna go to tatum in those moments 
True. We had a big return tonight, Drew Holiday. Bobby, you're there. I think you talked to him after the game. Um, 13 points for him tonight. 37 minutes, which is nice, coming off uh, some time off. What did you think about how he looked out there, and what did he have to say, if anything? Yeah, he said he felt good, better than expected, uh, and he ramped up steadily throughout the week. Uh, he was practicing Wednesday. He got some shots up on Monday, so he was able to you know, take his time with this, and it didn't look like he missed a beat tonight, knocked down threes. Uh, I thought defensively right from the start he got a quick steal and was making stuff happen on that end. And, you know, right at the end of the game, I th think he defended that last shot about as well as you can against right. Murray. Uh, so – I thought he looked like himself, and they benefited from having him out there. Uh, a couple of times, it was a late offensive rebounding, a rebound where he crashes from the corner. That's been a constant with him this year that felt great to have back in their lineup. Uh, so I, I don't think his uh, performance tonight really stood out any differently from what we've seen from him all year, just subtle impact on the game. Uh, and they need this. It hasn't stood out for a lot of the season. He hasn't had a prominent role in the offense, but for him to be this efficient on 11 shots, six threes, uh, when he just sat out for five games is a great sign. He's just so steady. And I said, again, what stood out to me in that locker room the most is the fact that like someone asked him, how are you going to bounce back from this? And he's just like, go to Saturday. And you know, when Tatum says that, he's like, oh, but like for a guy who's, been in this spot and won a championship and been through so much of this for him to just basically be like, you know, I'd rather just deal with this now and figure it out. And hopefully this kind of stuff doesn't happen in the playoffs. I, I feel it a little bit more from him. Like it resonates as authentic to me a little bit more from mm -hmm. a guy like him. So, you know, he hope that injuries done in the past completely. Now I'd imagine it is just being a little bit of a stinger there. Um, but you know, I, I don't, I don't have any concerns from them to coming out of this one. Anybody else on, on holiday or are we are we all pretty much in agreement that he looked like holiday out there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. Glad he's, glad he's back. You know, uh, I think this is important to kind of ramp up for the postseason, you know, missing five games mm -hmm. uh, in March. I mean, no one wants that. He's such an important player for this team, especially on the defensive end of the floor as a facilitator as well. So, yeah, I thought he looked good. I mean, um, you know, it wasn't going to be numbers were going to pop off the charts, but I just think it's uh, getting him – back was 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 big and i'm glad it happened on this road trip we got him right here see them in the first round in a few weeks so what got derek white we got, that, that kind of we got drew i mean one. drew so you how you adjusting to that drew uh, Hall. we can bat it with the same thing um being just as aggressive and not even more <clears throat> again i think at the end of the day for us something that we can clean up is offensive rebounding on their end and i think we take care of that it could be a different game he's right that is him talking about um, potential matchup against the Hawks in the playoffs. Guys, I want to remind everybody that this Garden Report is brought to you by the fine folks at PXG. Okay, you guys probably know PXG from their high-quality clubs, but they're getting into the apparel game. And it's late March, you know. It's still pretty chilly out here in New England, but – going to be april next we're going to wake up on monday it's going to be april the birds are going to be chirping the grass is going to start to be turning green and we're going to want to get out there with our golf clubs in the golf course you want to look good okay so right now at pxg um they're getting into the into the clothing game the apparel game you can go to pxg.com slash garden save 10 percent on all apparel and god i'm telling you some of these some of this golf stuff it can get pricey so that 10 percent is going to go a long way um oh, yeah. you know whether it's a golf trip whether it's just getting out there uh you know after work it's the sun staying up later they got something for everyone pants polos sweaters hats quarter zips joggers jackets dresses skirts if you're into that thing everything you could want so you want to elevate your style game on and off the course with the pxg spring summer 2024 collection Head over to pxg.com slash garden and save 10% on all apparel. That's pxg.com slash garden to save 10% on all apparel. Now, we can't have a garden report with a back-to-back -back loss without putting up the panic, <laughs> the panic meter, Bobby. 
Where are you guys at with this? Are we are we are we still in the green where where Bobby lives or used to live? I think Bobby's still over. <laughs> or are we just I'm heating up panic? a little bit this year. We just constant panic like like John. I'll, I'll start with uh, Joe Sway on this one. Joe Sway, we're on the we're give on us the panic a give here. us a color. Yeah, give us a color here. Where are you? Uh, I'm technically in the orange, but I'm probably borderline. I mean. Oh, just so he's heating up. Borderline orange to dark orange or orange to yellow? Orange to dark orange. Is that, is that oh, dark orange? Or like Whoa, oh, you're reaching John territory. Wow. Damn. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. Sorry. Orange to no, yellow. No. Excuse me. Oh, cooling okay. down. So you're, you're in like he's the middle. Cooling down a little you're somewhere bit. in the middle. Yeah, but at the same time, though, it's not like, you know, it's not one of those things where I'm like, oh, all bets are off. I still like this team to go to the finals, but it's just those type of uh, it's those characteristic, it's those flaws that I'm like, man, they, they're not going anywhere, and that that scares me. Actually, here we go. I like I like this better. Yeah. All right. Okay. Panic meter. Are we talking right. just tonight, Jimmy? No, we're not talking just. No, we're talking. You know, over the recently. You know, they, okay. Yeah, uh, the the last five games, I think you could say that even though some of them are wins. They've been playing differently. Defense has fallen off a little bit. Obviously, Monday they blew a big one. And tonight you can point to a number of probably concerns that you would not want to see turn into uh, regular occurrences. So is this just the you know, the end of the season, just whateverness, or is there reason to be like, well, hold on a second. Some of these things uh, could rear their ugly could rear its ugly head again in the playoffs, sort of deal. I'd, I'd put myself in the orange because <clears throat> you're looking at um, <laughs> you're looking at a string of games this month where they let leads dwindle. Uh, yeah. I think the playing through physicality point is valid. That's going to be a part of the playoffs. How can you adjust to that? I don't think they've acclimated well to those situations uh, in recent weeks in some of these tougher games here. Uh, so you do start to creep into the orange a little bit. That's not panic. Like things are just going to fall apart here and they're going to lose in these finals. Again, I still believe in this team as an NBA finals team, but we're judging them on championship. Uh, and mm -hmm. these are all things, all the things we bring up here that could potentially prevent them from winning a championship, the crunch time stuff. I, there's some debate out, out of this game where the offensive rebounding stuff's a real problem. Joe points to their, defensive rebounding percentage being really good uh, which is valid uh, but they do give is that up right a, up there with potential assists per game yeah they give up a pretty high number mm -hmm. of like raw offensive rebounds per game um you know which isn't the best stat but they give them up sometimes i feel like when they go small uh, when they play in that drop they're prone to giving them up but this was not a very good porzingis game by the way um so no it wasn't there's some room for a little bit of panic if you're believing in this team winning a championship this year. I think games like this and the Bucks and the Cavs just let a little bit of panic creep in. So I think you you're over that fence line, you know, that uh, Joe Sway is mm -hmm. sitting on there. Sure, I'm where you sit, where you sitting. I'm yellow. I'm yellow. I'm not. I'm not as worried as, as some of you guys are about this team at this point uh simply because i think at the end of the day the celtics this team is going to remind us of just how important it is to have all your pieces together and it could be the most insignificant piece but if it's a core piece you're going to need that um i think there's a lot of scenarios where if you if, if al horford was out there tonight would they have won the game maybe um would you feel better about their chances of winning it absolutely uh there have been other games where we, we've seen them not look good where they were missing you know you know, an, an Al Horford or Porzingis or someone who isn't Tatum or Brown, but I still part of their core. I'm good. I, I think they'll figure it out. And remember, the thing I keep reminding myself whenever I see this is that whoever they're playing has to beat them four times. Mm -hmm. To put them away, you have to beat them four times. I think these teams can be absolutely beaten once or twice in the series. Hell, I think there's some teams that could probably beat them three times. I don't think there's a team in the East that can put them away four times. Don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why my level of panic is still in the yellow. Uh, if there was a point. lime green, if there was a lime green, I'd go with that because lime green is between yellow and green. Uh, but I'm going yellow for this. I think and I do kind of have a lime green. I'd be there with you, Shroud, if we're just talking about tonight. I'm not panicking about this game. I didn't love Monday. I really didn't like the Bucks game more than 
many people did, I felt like. And then the Cavs game was really bad, even if it was some weird shot making from Dean Wade there. It's just managing these leads, you know, managing success, as Joe talks about a lot here. Like they they haven't had a great month, um, all things considered here. And the month's coming to an end. Transfer clean slate into April when the playoffs begin here. They're healthy. They've rested. I love the fact that tonight you get the full starting group together and deal with a situation like this. And let's face it, guys. This could re- legitimately be round one again. And we saw how much this matchup challenged them early last year. Uh, and this Hawks team, if they put it all together and figure it out and play like this, they could be even more threatening than a year ago because they're well coached. They do things that bother the Celtics here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we've kicked around those first round matchups, Jimmy. And Bede's going to be back. Philly could be challenging. Uh, Atlanta, challenging for all the reasons we're talking about tonight. Miami, the challenges there are obvious. And even Chicago, as mediocre as they are, might have the most crunch time wins in the NBA this year, last I looked. So they're a team that's played really well late in games and has played well against the Celtics generally this year too, uh, outside of that tournament game. So the four teams you're probably going to see in the first round all look like they could challenge you push a series six, seven games, maybe that's exactly what we're not looking for from the Celtics here. If they start the playoffs like that again, I think then your panic meter goes up a little bit. Interesting. I'm with Sherrod. I'm a, I'm on the yellow. I'm on the green yellow side of things. I'm not, I'm not really panicking (coughs) yet. I, I, I want to believe that these are just little road. Yeah. Right. What's going on over there? He was out. Oh, last night. Uh, I want to believe that this, these are just little little hiccups or little coughs, if you will, if you're Bobby. But um, I'm not ready to, to <laughs> say it's more than that. Yeah. But that being said, though. Metaphorically talk, speaking, though. Talk to me be, like – yeah. <laughs> Talk to me a week or, or – talk, talk to me 10 days from now, right before the regular season ends or whenever that is. If this still type of play is still going on, oh, I'm in the deep orange. I'm in the deep orange because that tells me that there's something off with these guys and that they're just not where they need to be heading into the playoffs. That's going to do it for us, guys. We want to thank everybody for jumping on with us. Remind everyone that you can still vote in the March Madness Garden Report bracket. I am being told that Blame Pie is in the lead right now over Farts My Dog, a six over a two. What? So if you want to see Farts My Dog advance, you're going to have to go over tw- to the Twitter and put your vote in for Farts My Dog. That would be a pretty major upset. And prior to that, I think he's your third center, was on a pretty convincing run over the number one seed, Thanasis Manning. So we could have a, a wild um, a wild final four here if these things keep going the way they are. Um, we want to thank everybody who watched going tonight. All the way. That's right. We want, we want to thank um, our, our great sponsors. We want to thank... Everybody who left a super chat tonight, 14 different super chats. So we really appreciate that, guys. Um, Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's the only way Bobby's going to be able to – Bobby's flight home is funded strictly on super chat. So the more we raise, the better his flight is. Right now it's not looking good, but – We'll see. <laughs> we'll see hey, hey, front, frontiers, you know, they're trying hard there, Jimmy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We might be able to stick him in. in, in what do you got? Do uh, we got three stops on the way home? But you'll get home soon, buddy. Yeah, I yeah, think I might stop. accidentally miss his flight and stick down here for another. <laughs> that would be Oops, a real Steven. shame. <laughs> oh, boy. That would be a real shame. Um, Don't send the text yet. I um, mean, not yet. You gotta wait. Wait. Don't um, send it. Um, it's probably begging us to end the show so we can get on with his his weekend. By the way, let me show. Let me let me give a shout out to uh the Hawks okay. PR staff. They're great. One of my favorite groups they in the are. league down here. Um, they were just really great to us all week. We spent a lot more time down here than you would for a normal road trip in the uh, NBA season. So it was awesome being around them. Uh, Georgia Tech people were awesome this week too. Uh, so just great people down here across the board. Thanks to all of them. Wow. You see Dame? You see Dame? Yeah. We, yeah, they practiced over there, so we got to catch up with oh him. Man. Uh, he must have been all smiles, man. Good for we'll him. make Amit clip this and send it to the Hawks PR staff so that they know that you thank them. How about that? Maybe you'll get awesome. yourself a nice – Yeah, my guy Billy. Seat. Love him. You'll get a better seat next year when you go. <laughs> all right, guys. Say good night. More Trey, Chick-fil-A man. cards. We'll see you We're Saturday. Out. Deuces. Wait, Amit's got an outro yes. for us, I think. 
No, he doesn't. He said he was going to work on an outro. He had a phenomenal game. Phenomenal. Four fits out. I, don't, I think it's an option. <laughs> That did not sound like a chair. It was a freaking chair. It does sound like a chair.